Hi everyone, Sharon here and I'm here today to show you a quick decoupage project, a little craft idea for this fun pot that I've recycled or upcycled. So today I want to show you that some things that I am going to be using and I've um, just used, I'm just going to be using for the decoupage papers, these gorgeous papers that were given to me by Sam from Raggedy Bits and um, I can't wait to use them. So we've got the Buzzy Bee one here and I don't know if it has a name. Let me see. It's called Busy Bees. Busy Bees. There you go. And this one is called Vintage Lilac Perfume. You can see the gorgeous lilac flowers on there. And this one that I'll be using today, which is called Vintage Pink Floral Border. And as you can see by the image on here, let me show you. I'll just open it up for you. So this one has a border look for it, to it. And I'm just using it on a small project today just to show you something super quick and easy you can do. But can you imagine putting that on a whole furniture piece or the side of a piece of furniture? And you don't worry about the lines, even though it comes folded, you don't worry about the lines because they all smooth out with your decoupage medium that you're going to be using. Today, I'm using two artisan products. Well, actually a brush too, probably. But the natural chalk finish in cream brulee is what I have pre-painted my bamboo pot. You can see from the inside, it's just a pot for a pot plant. And so I've just painted that with the chalk paint, Artisan's natural chalk finish in cream brulee. Now, if you want any of these, you can get these products from my website, irestorestuff.com. The other thing I'm gonna be using is Artisan's flat matte sealer. And I'm gonna use that to create the decoupage um, medium to stick the decoupage on. So let's have a look down here. I'll point you down and um, get started on our project. Okay, so I've pre-painted my pot, as I said, in the chalk finish, make sure it's completely dry. I did do two coats, but it gave pretty good coverage with, with just one coat. The other thing about using decoupage is you probably only need one coat because all you're doing is creating a base for your decoupage to go on top of. So I chose a color that was sort of similar tones to this background here. Then you just have to choose which quadrant you want your, or which um, section of the decoupage design that I want to use. I do like these pretty pink flowers. You could use this top as sort of like a border across here, or I could choose to use the, the bottom. I kind of like the, oh guys, now I'm, now I'm undecided. I think we'll go with this greenery here. It does only go up to here. Look, you could choose different parts for different sections, couldn't you? But I do like the way that it's got that border on the bottom. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with this actually, because I do like the flowers on it. I like the floral visual. So what I'm going to do is just create, cut a little bit around where I think that I might need. So I know that it's only going to go to about here. I'm not going to worry about doing the base because no one is really going to see the base. And this is where this decoupage paper, you could use the whole panel or just use sections of it. Just cut it to where you um, might use it. Okay, so I've got my first piece cut there. And again, you can go on to the next side. We can just do this one side right now though. Just set that aside to give you an idea of how to, how to go about doing the decoupage. Now I'm using Fusion's flat matte sealer, which you can use to seal your furniture projects. You can also use this to just seal chalk painted finishes, those porous finishes. Um, but today I'm going to use it as a decoupage medium. And I'm using Artisan's extra, extra small, beautiful blue bristle brush. Whoa, that's way too much. Never mind. You can always use it to seal it afterwards. All right, so we just have to add a pretty generous amount. I've um, already rolled and shaken the uh, bottle so that it should be nice and uh, mixed in because some of those you, you sort of need to um, mix up the matting agent that's on the bottom of them. All right, but don't worry if you've gone over the edge, I'm just doing nice uh, quick strokes. Now you need to work fairly quickly because it dries fairly quickly. So all we need to do is lay our decoupage paper right on top. Now I'm going to line that up with the top, though you don't have to, and just smooth it out quickly with my fingers. Look how easy that is. You might get some wrinkly bits, that's okay. 
If you do, we can always smooth those out with a little bit of plastic wrap. So I don't have plastic wrap, but I do have a handy dandy piece of plastic right here. So I'm just going to use that to smooth over, smooth out those bubbles. Let me just show you there. Using a piece of plastic so that your fingers don't stick to the now wet paper because the very thin, almost it's like, almost like a tissue paper. So you can see I'm starting to get all those little wrinkles out. Just using, you can use a piece of cling wrap, whatever you like. Making sure that you've got your decoupage medium right over to the edges. These would be great for using on canvases as well, these decoupage papers, and creating that mixed media art. You can add some stencils over the top, all sorts of fun, fun ideas I'm thinking up as I start to use them. And these are uh, obviously available from Sam at Raggedy Bits, and I'll leave a link for her page. I'll tag her wherever I post this video. Okay, so we'll let that dry. In fact, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm just going to bring my paper over here and start to cut because these are going to be the other three panels that I'm going to use on my paper. So you just need a little approximate amount. Um, that should cover the rest of the panels. So we did our first one, which was this piece here. This will be the next side. So we're just going to cut straight down that line there. Works well with this pot. They won't line up exactly. Uh, and it, it's not meant to because as you can see this piece, we're going to um, detach that in a minute. But now we've got our three pieces ready. We'll wait for that to dry before we go ahead and put on the rest of our decoupage. Still waiting for this first side to dry, but I thought I can do the opposite side. It doesn't matter that it's sitting right here on the table. That's fine. So this one is going to go here. Then the other flower part will go here and the fourth one here. So once again, just adding Artisan's Flat Matte Sealer. You want it to be fairly generous, but not too thick and runny. You don't want this running off the edges. You just want a nice even coat. And here we go again, laying that down, centering it, and you can slide it to where you want it. And as soon as the paper does get a little bit wet, you will see those wrinkles start to appear. And make sure it goes over the ends because you don't want those little ends poking up. And once again, grab your piece of plastic and smooth out those wrinkles right to the edges. And you can run your finger across the edges also if you like, just to define those edges. There we go. Okay, now that this, these two sides have dried, I'm just going to grab a little piece of sandpaper. Any little piece of sandpaper is fine, or you could use your sandy hands gloves. And we're just going to just gently, probably, oh, what is this one, a 180? You can use a 180, 240 might be even better. And it doesn't matter if we sand through to the paint because, you know, that distress look on the side is just totally fine. I'm just going to run our fingers along with the sandpaper. We'll run the sandpaper along. Until that um, tissue paper, the decoupage paper, starts to tear away. So you can see that tearing away right there. And then you've got a nice smooth edge ready to pour our next piece that'll go on the side there. So again, just the sanding along the side. If you don't have a sanding glove, you can get these from my website, myresourcestuff.com. Um, just gently. You don't want too much paint taken off the side there until that begins to tear. You've got a nice smooth edge there. And then at the bottom, because there's a little bit that you touch, 
bit longer. So cross that bottom edge. There we go. And then the side. Okay, I've sped this bit up here just so you can see uh, that we're just repeating that same thing again. So we're just going around all the sides, sanding that bit off. And then repeat with the next, the next two sides. So we've got plenty here. What we need to do now is just using our artisan flat mat sealer and now go across all of this and seal it. And you will see that it should deepen the colour and want that to just gives it a lovely finish, a nice matte finish. You will see the colour change slightly. But the background, it sort of takes on that background of the, the creme brulee, which is on the top here. See the difference between the top and the bottom where I've paint uh, sealed it. As we go down, you see that colour deepening a little bit. Nice, even strokes. Work fairly quickly with the sealer. You don't want to go back and forth too many times across it because you don't want that um, to start drying and get tacky. If you do feel it starting to get tacky, it means it's starting to dry already and you need to work super quickly. Come back and, and finish it at a later time instead of going over it too many times. Got a gorgeous finish on it. Last coat on this side. Now if you wanted to, you could also finish off the bottom there with the sealer because chalk finish is a porous finish. Um, so when you're using chalk paints, you will always need a wax or a sealer to finish that off. Also, that just ties in our ends that we've just sanded off. And we just want to make sure that they're all sealed in. So I will need to leave that down here. Also, you can make sure you go over the edges to make sure that they're all sealed properly. You might get a little bit more. I can see just a little bit more of that bubbling happening right here. So we're just going to smooth that down again. And then after I've finished letting that dry, I'll seal that top ring. Okay, now that that's completely dry, you can see the gorgeous finish there. 
you will just grab that last little bit of finish and um, seal those the tops that I've painted also in creme brulee. You can leave the inside with the bamboo uh, and you can actually add a plant pot in there. If you do see any little edges peeking up and now's your time to seal those back down too. I'm getting it across there and also just making sure those tops are completely sealed on every edge. Ta da! And then we have the finished pot. And there we go, I've added our pot. Plant, you can do a real one. Mine is fake, but you can add a beautiful pot plant to that and have a gorgeous little centerpiece for your table or anywhere you like. Pop it on a bookshelf. Um, use it for your home garden. Isn't that the cutest little upcycle to this old bamboo planter? Here you go. So if you want some of those more, more of those decoupage papers, check out raggedybits.com. The website is right there. I'll link it there in the comments or in the description of this video. So that is the one called the Vintage Pink Floral Border. And um, she's got plenty of sand, but plenty of others that you can try there. So check those out at regularbooks.com. I'm Sharon from Iris Source Stuff. Thanks for watching this tutorial video.